It takes just 12 weeks to transform your career, 12 weeks to be a product manager. Join our product management training, get direct mentoring, develop real projects, and get job connections with experts from these reputable companies. Get 50% off if you sign up now. Mungkin sekitar 20 menit, uh, kita bakal uh, talk about PMF. Jadi, as you guys know, I think uh, PMF uh, is sort of the holy grail yeah, of, of product. Uh, kayaknya everywhere, every book that you read about product management will always mention product market fit kan PMF to a certain extent. Uh, usually, the joke around product managers is PMF is sort of like chasing the unicorn. Uh, kayak it's, it's, people don't really know kayak sebenarnya PMF itu artinya apa. Uh, banyak banget definisi di luar sana. nggak uh, ada satu cara untuk mendapatkan PMF, cuman PMF itu penting banget untuk didapatkan kan, because it it really is the um, sort of the life or death of a startup is with PMF sebenarnya. Kalau untuk yang um, any any startup ya, whether it's product driven, tech driven, uh, ataupun konvensional startup, uh, they still need to get PMF to a certain extent. Uh, jadi mungkin tadi dari review udah sempat uh, intro sedikit. Uh, my name is Praz. Uh, jadi actually my background uh, itu di quantitative economics uh, and finance. Jadi beda banget sama sekarang uh, malah di di bidang produk. Uh, I've always wanted to be a banker sebenarnya kayak mau kerja di bank, uh, mau mau masuk ke saham, investments. Uh, cuman things didn't work out that way. Uh, and turns out kayak just fell in love with with product actually uh, since Traveloka. I actually didn't know kayak product manager itu apa waktu masuk Traveloka. Uh, really started uh, at, at, at an entry level, associate product manager. Uh, jadi di sana belajar um, dari awal, dari nol. Um, I didn't even know kayak backend, frontend artinya apa, hi-fi atau design itu apaan. Jadi uh, really start from scratch. And I mean that is what's exciting gitu about, about being a product manager kan. Karena anyone can be a product manager. Kayaknya if you see a lot of product managers out there, There is no one clear path ya to be a product manager. Uh, ada yang ex arsitek, ada yang ex even dari biology, dari science, ya kan natural sciences. Uh, jadi really it's, it's such a versatile job uh, that requires a 360 view of things. Karena when when you become a product manager, you're sort of the jack of all trades kan. You're not specialized in one thing. I cannot code, I cannot design. <laughs> um, you know, I, I I I cannot actually build a product. Cuman ya yeah, you're sort of uh, unifying all the stakeholders kan designer uh, tech team and then sort of being in the middle um, not not being able to do what they do tapi sort of um, being the orchestrator gitu kan uh, istilahnya kalau misalnya di di orkestra ya uh, jadi really really fun um, yeah started in uh, my product management career in Traveloka uh, terus briefly moved to Singapore before COVID. Uh, then COVID hits, um, and because of personal reasons, um, couldn't stay in Singapore. Uh, jadi moved back to Jakarta, uh, and since then I have been in a very um, startup environment. Yeah, um, di buku kas waktu itu, waktu uh, I joined baru kayak dua tiga bulan startupnya. Uh, jadi really started uh, from a very small product uh, hingga sekarang udah uh, ada lima juta merchant yang pakai. Uh, and since then, fall in love sort of with the zero to one aspect of of the product, gitu ya. When when we call product market fit, it's really about the zero to one, kan? Karena kalau udah satu ke sepuluh, it's growth stage, and then sepuluh ke seratus is more of the scaling stage, ya. Jadi, I've always been interested in the zero to one aspect of things, uh, and hopefully today uh, through this PMF talk, you guys can also learn more, uh, belajar lebih banyak gitu soal product market fit. Nah, jadi kita hari ini akan uh, go into mungkin kayak tiga topik ya soal product market fit. Kita mulai dulu dengan apa sih itu product market fit. Uh, dan kita juga akan um, talk a bit about the myths. Yang yang orang suka bilang product market fit inilah product market fit itu, tapi sebenarnya itu bukan gitu ya. Dan yang ketiga nanti kita coba lihat framework-nya sedikit ya soal PMF. Jadi mungkin untuk yang satu sama dua, I'll just skim through it quickly. Uh, terus nanti kita bisa deep dive lebih untuk yang framework-nya sendiri gitu. Karena itu kan lebih uh, inti sari dari uh, this talk. Jadi sebenarnya product market fit itu apa sih, ya kan? Product market fit is extremely difficult to achieve, right? That is factual. Uh, jadi product market fit ini emang susah banget buat dicari, and most startup when it fails because they don't have product market fit. That's 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 the reason, right? 
uh, nanti <laughs> reasonnya apa mereka nggak ada product market fit that's that that very human most startup will fail because they don't have product market fit right jadi product market fit itu bayangin kayak um, suatu ember ya kan jadi in most companies tuh when you start a company you'll probably have like a bucket gitu kayak ember tapi embernya banyak bolong gitu jadi imagine that a lot of holes ya kan a lot of bolong gitu nah sebenarnya kalau kita mau cari PMF itu uh, missionnya adalah gimana caranya kita bikin embernya ini lebih efektif jadi gimana caranya kita bikin ember yang bolong ini jadi nggak bolong lagi gitu karena when once you have sort of a perfect bucket uh, once you have a bucket yang enggak nggak banyak bolong ya nanti you can fill it up with water right Nah, water ini atau air ini analoginya seperti kayak when you start acquiring user gitu. When you start acquiring user atau when you're acquiring business when you're in the B2B market, that's when you actually start pouring the water gitu. Right? Tapi most startup will fail karena mereka itu spending so much on digital marketing ya kan, spending so much on acquisition, burning money, tapi they cannot retain any user because there's no product market fit gitu. Jadi bayangin dia udah isi air, udah udah kerannya udah dibuka Cuma waktu masuk ke ember akhirnya keluar lagi airnya gitu. Jadi that's that's actually the analogy lah ya kan. Jadi kita mau dapat PMS sebenarnya untuk dapetin um, the, the 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 center of it is to get that perfect bucket yang yang enggak leaky. Jadi nanti you can scale up your startup right. You can then burn money, you can spend on digital marketing to acquire user and acquire revenue. Jadi product market fit itu adalah when um, your product Right when you have a product that can satisfy the market, right? Nah, tapi PMF ini juga uh, we need to know bahwa marketnya juga harus lumayan besar gitu size-nya ya kan. You also cannot be you cannot say you have product market fit, tapi you're solving uh, let's say a hundred thousand dollars worth of market size. It's too small. How how can you build a business gitu kalau market size cuma seratus ribu dolar ya kan? Uh, jadi sebenarnya PMF ini adalah the intersection when your product right meets the market. Right when you create a product, uh, jadi ada market di mana market ini pasti ada isu-isunya, ada target persona yang mempunyai un, um, needs kan yang belum terpenuhi, and you sort of create the product to meet within that needs. Jadi that that is PMF. Yeah. Nah, once again, jadi uh, biasanya di startup itu ya, once PMF PMF is achieved, uh, waktu uh, kalian udah punya dapetin ember nih yang yang udah nggak banyak bolong ya. Dan pada saat itu, that's when a startup can start scaling up, right? Uh, that's when a startup start fundraising, uh, mulai burn money in digital marketing, mulai acquis- uh, acquire in B2B, mulailah build sales teamnya uh, untuk acquire usernya. Karena at the end of the day, when you have PMF, then it's worth it gitu to acquire user karena mereka bakal retain kan. That's the whole reason of why PMF is super important. So a couple of myths about PMF. Uh, yang pertama adalah banyak uh, mungkin ada beberapa yang pernah dengar eh kalau product market ini selalu nih uh, you launch a feature tiba-tiba dapat product market fit no it's not like that right product building is never about getting uh, things correct the first time uh, I think there is a statistic di mana when you're building a product feature actually dari 10 feature yang you build probably one will 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 be successful right jadi product market fit is always continuous right Uh, and and myth yang dua adalah it's super obvious when you have product market fit that's also wrong. It's not obvious, right? Sometimes product market fit itu nggak ada satu definisi gitu. Nggak ada kayak oh kalau misalnya you guys get 30% retention di bulan pertama itu berarti you get product market fit. That's that's on it, right? There is there is combination of a lot of different metrics uh, that you it's sort of kayak the, it's very subjective. Tapi at the same time you know it when you get product market fit gitu. As a product manager, you'll you'll see your data and you see like ah oh, okay like you know there's 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 product market fit there. Oh, uh, yang ketiga adalah once you achieve product market fit, you can't lose it. Ini juga salah. Banyak banget startup, ya intinya kayak uh, contohnya kayak Friendster gitu atau MySpace, right? Uh, mereka uh, get product market fit, tapi karena mereka nggak bisa berkembang dengan the user needs, akhirnya mereka kalah gitu. Jadi again. Uh, once you have product market fit, actually you, you always need to maintain to make sure that you always delivering product yang solving a real need atau real issue. Dan yang terakhir uh, juga yang paling penting adalah once you have product market fit, actually that's the time where you need to be more careful about your competitor ya. Yeah? Uh, karena when you achieve product market fit, competitors will know, they will copy you, they will benchmark you, and that's when things get very interesting kan. Jadi actually once you have product market fit, you need to keep building your moat 
uh, mode ini maksudnya itu kayak your defend mechanism ya to defend competitors to make sure you have competitive advantage. Uh, jadinya nanti you guys can uh, sort of overrun your competitors. Cool. Jadi sebenarnya um, when it comes to PMF, right, it's sort of like product building. Uh, jadi um, when you want to achieve PMF, you sort of gotta go through all these four points. Yang pertama adalah you need to identify dulu nih problemnya apa. Ya kan pain point dari user itu apa. Who are your user persona? What is their needs? What is the problem that you're trying to solve, right? Jadi sebenarnya yang di atas dua ini adalah what uh, I like to call problem discovery, right? It's, it's the phase where you need to fall in love with the problem. Karena if you don't fall in love with the problem, you can't solve it well, uh, right? Jadi for, for me, I would spend, I would say 80% of my time actually um, right now uncovering problem spaces, right? Uh, knowing what is the vision of the product, knowing the strategy, the roadmap, right? That, that's all in the problem discovery. Uh, actually, now probably I spend 20% of time executing and, and building products, but most of the time I'm spending within the problem discovery space, right? Then after you got a problem that you want to solve, it's time to build the product. Uh, then obviously after you ship the product, you still need to measure uh, results and iterate, right? Nah. Jadi yang paling penting adalah pelajaran pertama tuh when you're trying to identify pain points is never expect your customers to innovate for you. Oftentimes tuh what what I learn and myself right and a lot of kaya aspiring product managers when they first become um, when when they're first in a product uh, team um, the the first skill I would say that's really hard to get is empathizing with your user. Ya kan? Even oftentimes, I still see a lot of researchers always ask the question to the customer, kayak, eh, kira-kira fitur apa ya yang nantinya kita harus build, right? That's, that's the wrong question to be asking your user what feature they want, right? The users are very good within the knowing what problems they're facing, tapi they would never know kayak what they need, right? Contohnya adalah kalau misalnya 200-300 tahun lalu, di tahun 1700-an, Uh, waktu kita uh, masih, you know, generally masih naik kuda gitu ya. When you ask around and ask them kayak what they need, pasti yang mereka bilang itu they want a faster horse. Because they cannot tell you they, they want a car, right? Uh, tapi they know they want a faster faster horse karena sekarang jarak menempuh dari titik A ke titik B itu terlalu lama, right? That is the problem and they know the problem really well. Cuman they will not be able to tell you the solution. Yang kedua adalah setelah uh, setelah itu you also need to formulate sort of the hipotesa kan. Jadi pasti semua orang dari kita when when we're sort of within building a product, kita pasti tahu lah kayak kita tahu hypothesis hypothesisnya gitu ya. Kayak kira-kira masalah apa sih yang kita mau pecahkan. Uh, jadi dari pertama adalah when when we know masalah apa yang kita mau pecahkan, kita juga uh, harus pikirkan sebenarnya persona apa sih yang kita mau targetin, who, who are our target customers, right? We need to fall in love with the problem and fall in love with the persona. It's easier when you're building a product, kalau misalnya you yourself is the persona. For example, I was in Traveloka, I was building a flightless hotel product. I can empathize, soalnya I, I'm, I'm a user of, of Traveloka. Kan? I, I've, booked flight uh, I've booked flights before, I've booked hotels before, it's easier. Tapi when you're not the persona, it's really important to paint the picture of the persona first. So you can empathize later on with what problems they're facing. Then the most fun part actually for me uh, is identifying the needs, right? Uh, I, I feel like this is one of the hardest skill to, to get. And until now, I'm still always learning, right? On, on how to best empathize with user, how to best um, understand what they need. Soalnya, uh, it's really not a straightforward um, approach, gitu ya. It's, it's not objective. Uh, karena yang susahnya itu, kadang-kadang customer sendiri itu kesusahan gitu untuk tahu sebenarnya masalah dia apa. Uh, jadi, um, really kayak, what you need to do here, uh, istilahnya tuh you need to be like Sherlock Holmes, right? You're sort of the investigator of your customer. They wouldn't really be able to tell you explicitly what they need, Sometimes you gotta read uh, through the lines, right? You gotta read in between the lines. Uh, jadi for me, this is um, I, I would say kayak 
this is very important to, to really get that empathy for your users, to be able to empathize with them and, and know what, what they actually need is a very important skill set. Now, next, yeah. Uh, usually you would do like research, right? You would do interviews, in-depth interviews. Uh, sometimes you would do diaries. Uh, then you would sort of map out me. Jadi, this is the combination of um, sort of understanding the persona and understanding their needs, right? Uh, it's the journey map. Kalau buat B2C, biasa kita callnya journey mapping. Kalau misalnya di B2B, kita biasa callnya service blueprint. Tapi it's the same thing. You sort of map the journey, identify pain pointnya di mana aja. Um, throughout their journey. And this is when you would actually have a holistic view kan, end to end, which problem or which part of the journey do you want to tackle first? Oops. Okay. Then next adalah, usually when, when you already come up with the um, with the journey mapping, the next thing you would do is actually focusing on one or a few problems, lah, right? Instead of solving every problem here, it's always better to pick a few problems and solve it really well. And this is why I, I, I was telling um, you guys in the beginning that most of the time when, when, when you become product managers and when you sort of become more experienced, right? When you're sort of stepping away from the execution mindset, the, the important thing is spending time on on the problem itself, right? Uh, for me, being a product manager is, is not just about building and shipping features, right? But more importantly is how do you make sure your stakeholders, your, your colleagues also empathize and fall in love with the problem? So Anya, trust me, right? It is easier for you to align on the problem first than later on when you jump to solutioning and then people don't agree with the solution. You pretty much... I would say you, you fail as a product manager if your stakeholders don't even agree with the problem you're solving, right? That's, that's sort of the first step, aligning everyone on the problem, making sure everyone is aligned. This is the problem we're solving. Then the rest will, will the execution part will be much, much, much easier because everyone knows, right, what they're solving. Um, prioritization is also key. Uh, a lot of times, startup don't really get to PMF because they try to solve too many problems. Uh, and and if you see a startup that uh, that actually reaches uh, the unicorn, decacorn level, and finally exit, they always focus on one problem really well at the start. Zendit, the newly unicorn company, right? They only focus on transfers at the start, right? Being being able to disperse um, and allowing businesses to collect payments and to disperse payments. Traveloka at the first only focuses on flight booking, right? Before they expand to Traveloka, is Traveloka experience, they only focus for flight for the first around two to three years, then hotel for the first five years. Jadi it's really contained. They're solving one problem or two problems really well. Now, setelah itu, then it comes to product building me. Setelah you come up with sort of the problem that you want to solve, you know um, what user needs that you're trying to fulfill, then it's all about product building, right? And product building, I usually use a jobs to be done framework. Uh, jobs to be done, I think uh, it's, it's another topic that can take hours, right, to, to uh, delve in for the framework. You guys should read up about jobs to be done. Tapi jobs to be done basically is a framework where you frame Sebenarnya what you're trying to solve in a jobs to be done manner. Jadi misalnya, okay, user ini sekarang, uh, let's say the jobs to be done of the user is that the user wants to find cheap flights, wants to find the best uh, flight. They want to go to, let's say, Semarang and they want to find the cheapest flight um, according to their preference. That's a jobs to be done, right? So you're, you eventually will build a feature product uh, to meet or to fulfill the jobs to be done. Karena setiap jobs to be done, pasti nanti juga ada pain point-nya, pasti ada emotional pain point-nya, ada functional pain point-nya. Jadi from jobs to be done, it actually will be the foundation of what your features or what your product features will look like. Another thing that's also important as a product manager is to make sure that you set up a bigger context for your team, right? And this is where uh, 
then your product vision will sort of come into life. Contohnya gini, um, contohnya adalah uh, maybe uh, your jobs to be done tuh um, you want to help user drilling a hole, right? Uh, kalau misalnya kita bikin produk, let's say let's get out of the digital realm for a bit, ya kan? Let's say you're in the physical, um, your your product manager of physical product, yaitu a, a hole driller, ya kan? Bore. Um, probably why you create their product is because you wanna drill a hole, right? You wanna help user drill a hole. Tapi then in order for you to sort of innovate and come up with the more visionary product strategy is to think and ask why. Why do you think people need to drill a hole, right? Maybe people wanna drill a hole because they wanna uh, put a hook, right? Kenapa mereka mau put a hook gitu? Oh, maybe because they actually want to put an art, right? They want to put a painting. Oh, kenapa sih mereka mau uh, put a painting in their house? It's, it's, to, it's to decorate their home, right? Tapi why do people want to decorate their home? It's because they want to express themselves. Actually, the same technique uh, is being used by Samsung. And I think you guys know sekarang Samsung ada kan TV yang kalau misalnya mati itu bisa jadi painting, right? That's that sort of the innovation that you'll get uh, when when you keep asking the five whys, right? That's sort of the innovation that you get uh, and the solution that you get when Samsung comes up with the idea that a TV can also be used to express themselves. A TV can also, rather than just watching TV, it can be used to express the homeowner and to decorate the house even more. Now, usually, From, from all of that, you will, this is sort of the combination or the product roadmap kan, atau the product pillars and product strategy. Coming up with the vision, coming up with the key themes uh, of, of, of your product, and coming up with the jobs to be done yang you want to solve kan, within the team. Uh, and and this, this is the product roadmap that will sort of help you to, to build uh, product features and to help you achieve product market fit. Setelah itu, then uh, after coming up with the roadmap, you would then actually execute, right? Uh, and execution uh, also usually involved with design sprint. Uh, and what, what I want to say, I mean, from this slide is I just want to make sure that uh, you guys, when, when you guys become product managers or when you are a product manager already, I hope that uh, you treat your designer as a think tank partner rather than just, you know, an executor. Because oftentimes uh, what I see is a lot of, Product managers will just ask their designer to do this, this, this. Please design this for me. Please do this for me. But instead of that, you actually need to allow them to explore solutions, right? You should come them with problems, not solutions. Uh, and, and you need to give sort of the, the, the playground, right, for designers to actually explore uh, and, and, and um, discover the solution that they want to uh, execute. And then finally, it's about uh, measuring, about doing product analytics. Um, again, I mean, this is no non-sponsor, but uh, you know, Mixpanel is actually you know the, the the best product analytics platform out there. I really love Mixpanel, uh, and yeah, like you with in in the product team as well, you would spend a lot of time actually analyzing your product, right? Uh, because when you're building a product, it's always the trifecta: the inputs uh, from the customer, from your product uh, data analytics and also from your stakeholders, right? So again, becoming product manager means you need to have a holistic view of inputs, of these three inputs to make sure that it feeds into your product roadmap. Um, yeah, that's that's about it uh, from my end. Sorry that I went